Hello and good morning <clears throat> and good evening from my side. I am joining you all from Colombia today and it's midnight here. So happy to be with you all today. Welcome to this special event of Young Indian Theosophist organized by the Indian section and especially in the sense that that we are going to know about each other with whom we have been together for quite some time now. And we'll get to know each other better in this session, know your fellow theosophist. But before we proceed Good morning, brothers and sisters. This, with this session, uh, the first session, as you know, we had on 5th of June. And this is the second session in which about 16, 17 of our young members or members of the YIT group will share something about themselves. But before that, let us all come together and invoke the presence of that immutable principle in which we live, we move, and have our being. Oh, hidden light vibrant in every atom, O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature, O oh, hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May each who feels himself as one with thee, know he is therefore one with every other. data on कर दो भैया क्योंकि कुछ गड़बड़ लग रहा है इसके अंदर आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन टू प्लीज म्यूट देयर माइक्रोफोन्स बिकॉज़ इट क्रिएट्स डिस्टरबेंस एंड अननेसेसरी साउंड्स ड्यूरिंग द मीटिंग सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल वंस अगेन इन टुडे सेशन and you already are aware of the names of the people who are going to share uh, to with us about themselves but there is little bit one or two changes in the list depending upon their own uh, commitments that they have some engagements so i will be requesting them to come forward and share something about them and the things that they will be sharing, we already know about the name, lodge name, what they are doing, how they come in, came in touch with theosophy, how which aspect of theosophy appeals them the most, their hobbies and any vision or ideas to make theosophy more appealing to the youth. And within these parameters, we'll be knowing from our participants. So, although the first name is Brother Pradeep Reddy, but uh, Sister Pooja requested that since she has uh, to leave early for some appointments, so I request Sister Pooja Gole to yes. share with us uh, about the theme. Sister Pooja. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Hello, hello everyone. I'm glad to be here and be a part of this introductory program of IIT. So, hi, I am Pooja Gore, a 25-year-old girl from Nagpur. Uh, I'm an individual who is a kinesthetic learner, dancer, performer, theater artist, but most importantly, a person who is helpful, kind, and sincere in her work. I, I got a fateful opportunity to be connected to various places in my life, which enhanced me and improved me a lot. So uh, my course plays a really important role. The course is human development as I did human development as post-graduation, which really helped me to learn about human mind and human behavior, which in turn helped me uh, to understand people around me in my life. Before that, I uh, did my graduation in home science, which had many subjects. So like it had five subjects. So I consciously chose, I was helped basically to consciously choose my subject as human development so it's it's really helpful so out of um, so i'm glad 
about it because i'm glad about the choices made by me by my family and the surrounding which i have so uh, this course led me to my current job as an english educator in vedanta innovations private limited where i teach phonetics to kids uh, who are 4 to 7 years of age so i i'm happy in this job i am happy at my job where it's it's a mixture of joy and tiredness so what yeah because as i deal with kids but it's fun also it's you know they have funny stories so it's quite nice i'm i'm liking my job so my surrounding also include theosophical society uh, my surrounding has chosen this very carefully for me to be here in this segment i'm associated with theosophical society since childhood but just recently i'm able to give my bare contribution in ts and i'm glad about it that i get opportunities to do that in my mind theosophical society is a place where there is no partiality no power no insecurities just a place with pure hearted people knowledge wisdom and serenity where people are really enjoying the bliss of theosophic literature this is what i wish for the theosophy to be i really wish that theosophy should be should be like this so yes this is where uh, i complete my introduction thank you so much and i'm glad thank to you. meet all of you here yeah same for all of us uh, pooja that we are also glad to know more about you and about all the various aspects that you have touched in your life and really doing a wonderful work with the children and we wish you all the best in all your future endeavors and it has been a really very fruitful session the last session of 5th june and we hope the same for today that there is so much of talent and so much of depth in all these all our young indian theosophists that i mean really the future of the theosophical society and of course their individual career and in future is very promising so thank you puja for sharing with us and now i would request brother pradeep whom we have heard many times while conducting the study sessions just like we have heard puja also taking part in symposiums so i request brother pradeep to please share with us something about on this thing pradeep ji thank you thank you shikhar ji very good morning to everyone so i'm uh, i have been introduced to you many times by kritika uh, but still uh, today i want to share few things uh, my name is pradeep ms <clears throat> and i Uh, i stay in bangalore and i am a member of uh, bangalore uh, city lords karnataka theosophical federation i have been member officially since uh, 2002 uh, but i am a third generation theosophist and that's how i came to know about theosophy because uh, i was born and brought up in a theosophical family where my grandparents parents uncles aunts all my first cousins Uh, everyone all are members of uh, theosophical society so whenever there is a, a meeting or a, a study camp or anything of uh, uh, in uh, in karnataka theosophical federation our entire family used to go so it it became a kind of family outing also for us and even uh, for uh, yearly annual conference in adia uh, we used to book for the entire family like 10 to 15 members and that's how uh, young people who don't even understand what is theosophy uh, still started going with family members and then slowly uh, started understanding what is theosophy taking part in meetings understanding the lectures and then eventually becoming uh, the members officially at some point of uh, time in their life so that's how we were brought up uh, to theosophy we were brought up to theosophy not introduced to theosophy i would like to say and um, yeah professionally i am a business manager for an organic products company and um, i'm also a professional consultant for uh, hydrophonics and that's my day job and what aspect ap uh, appeals to me most about uh, theosophy is um, the the scientific reasoning and uh, science based 
uh, study of uh, life and this world at large uh, is what that appeals to me most because um, we have seen like many organizations, spiritual organizations, they, uh, they teach uh, th spiritual things to people uh, which leads to salvation and all these things to a happy life uh, and also uh, life after the death. Uh, but however, we, f we see very less of scientific background or scientific reasoning um, or any uh, spiritual thing uh, or any study of spiritual thing uh, with the scientific reasoning. So that is lacking. Sometimes spirituality means uh, it's something, it is regarded as something opposite to science, which is uh, which science cannot answer or something like that. Uh, but what I feel uh, is in theosophical society, we take science and spirituality hand in hand and we give scientific background for everything that is there in the study. And that is what appeals to me uh, very much. And what makes theosophy to, uh, uh, to be more attracted towards youth is I think uh, we we deal too much with uh, studies, symposiums, and lectures where uh, which which, uh, which will appeal to uh, older people or uh, elder people. But what appeals most to the young on the youth is uh, like uh, camps, youth camps, like yoga camps, meditation camps, social service camps. Basically, a lot of which involves a lot of traveling, and of course conferences and, uh, make, uh, and giving speech and uh, participating in symposiums during these camps. So uh, I think these um, camping and traveling based yoga, meditation mixed, um, social service mixed study camps uh, is what that attracts youth uh, a lot. We tried this in our Bangalore City Lodge uh, before the COVID started and that had really attracted many, many young people, young minds into uh, theosophy and then eventually they became uh, serious learners and serious uh, readers of theosophical literature and they became the members so that really worked where uh, such uh, once in three months or once in six months camps uh, where yoga meditation social service practical uh, group studies and all these things are involved i think those things will attract uh, the youth uh, very much into theosophy thank you so much i hope i didn't take much time Thank you. Thank you, Brother Pradeep, for sharing with us your thoughts on the theme today. And really, you brought up a very important point that the scientific uh, basis of spirituality, that the science of spirituality is what we get in theosophy and which very often is missing in other places. And also the effect of being born in a Philosophical family creates gives us so much of opportunity that how from the childhood a uh, person can be at least given that environment and then later on it's their own journey. And the activities that you have taught, that's a very good thing. And for everybody's information, uh, the International Convention of the Theosophical Society will be happening or is planned to be conducted in person this time in Adia. And before that, there will be a youth convention. The dates, I don't know exactly right now, but maybe 27, 28 uh, December or something like that, so, which will be shared later with everyone. So those who plan to attend, you can check up more on the website of tsndr.org. And we also plan to have a youth camp maybe in Bhawali or maybe in Varanasi, where all these things, what Brother Pradeep has indicated, uh, we can put into effect. And we have among us many of the experienced people who can create many activities like Gomutiji also actually suggested to have a activity today, which is very interesting. But for that, we needed much more some preparation time and planning time which, uh, due to today's session uh, indicated. So we couldn't implement it, but we'll try to do it some other time. And as our next uh, share speaker, we would like to invite uh, Sister Sobralina. Monty, whom we all know, who 
of course doesn't need any introduction but today we will know something more about her than the normal introduction that we hear before her lectures so we all know her we have all listened to her in symposiums moderations talks and a lot of other work that she is doing with the children so i'll invite sister sudalina mohanty to share with us her thoughts hey good morning all of you uh, i don't think i need to talk much about as an introduction of me but still as a format i must tell few words before i actually come to the gist of the introductory round as you know i am sugralina and i represent prayas theosophical lodge uh, before this lodge was founded i was a member since 2003 and i got to learn about this society through brother pradeep mahapatra and sister mitalini mahapatra uh, formally uh, but informally i remember if i go back to my childhood my eldest maternal uncle brother bhavani shankar mohanty who is a member of the who is a very long standing member of uh, utkal theosophical federation from barabatti lodge katak i remember when we were in school he used to go to attend uh, theosophical meetings and a lot of uh, uh, people came home in my uh, nana ji's house who would be from different background like there was a sardar ji who was a very bosom friend of him then he would come up uh, with people from other religions other belief systems and there will be a lot of stories about you know people functioning differently in the society and to a very young mind in a school level when i was there i wondered how these people are managing to behave differently even in social systems like in different social weddings they will go beyond normal tradition even you know in death rituals they would do certain things do not do certain things which is beyond our social norms that clicked me and probably from there this quest came in i remember when i was a child i did not believe in going to you know going to offer any flower or diya or any bhog chadhana all this stuff i don't know why i didn't do but i used to question my mom a lot why we need to do this that time nobody told me that we have to connect within but somewhere with that without i was struggling i had been to ramakrishna mission when i was in school to of course study books pranamananda ashram yogananda ashram even i went to um, you know bharat seva ashram sangha and uh, this um, prajapita brahma kumari i used to subscribe many magazines monthly magazines quarterly magazines and my quest was just on and on but when i landed up in bhuvaneshwar in 2003 uh, because i was about to get married and uh, i i i have i had already worked for 7 years that time i had to join an organization in bhuvaneshwar so during those 4 5 years of stay in bhuvaneshwar when i stayed with mahapatra's family i saw the father mahapatra the mother mahapatra the brother, you know son and son in law mahapatras then their kids all into theosophy regular prayers regular meditations studying and everything so this format somehow appealed me then there was this best part of getting into your own silence where nobody would actually disturb you you have your own silence zone so somewhere that uh, that uh, triggered uh, me uh, you know to uh, move through this theosophical societies learnings and all and immediately i don't know like i was as if destined to be a member and the very four years i was there in uh, bhuvaneshwar i was full to into theosophy uh, you could say sharing uh, preaching or uh, uh, talking to kids going to our relatives and you know telling them about theosophy and it was an excitement for me something very new was happening in my life and during that period i think i absorbed certain qualities like i know i'm a very chanchal kind of a person always bubbling bubbling and bubbling but some amount of patience if it has come to me it has come to through this this theosophical teaching because it has uh, it has uh, imbibed me with certain truths of life which i could never deny i could i could not challenge like this law of karma is so fundamental and uh, reincarnation came out so uh, profound and a lot of uh, deep and you know all these basic rooted things when i started reading and i started applying i would rather say because i am speaking in this youth forum it is not about just reading i literally uh, experimented them i experimented on my reactions on my responses to situations and then gradually learned there are certain things you cannot deny you have to go with that you have to face it you have to look at it as is the outside as well as the within 
this is how my journey happened and during my membership uh, for the last uh, close to 18 years now 18 19 years now so i have uh, i had been a uh, preliminary member of siddharth lodge then came to delhi and uh, got my transfer to shankar lodge then fo i founded prayas theosophical lodge by the time actually we founded this lodge and so many young minds we connected i revisited the learner in me and if i uh, uh, you know if i have to speak in one word what am i beyond theosophy before theosophy after theosophy i am a learner and probably that is the inherent quality in me which helped me to explore and probably for that reason i could go and connect with younger kids i could learn a lot of things from my own children i mean who i am operating with i took them to different camps i made them study the things but while i made them study i was actually rereading life together with them so studying sharing engaging this all came naturally to me and probably that helped me to interact with people and um, Fortunately, I'm an HR professional, so my job for the last 26 years has been dealing with people, people and people, their concerns, their issues, uh, their hitches, their hassles. So when we solve their problem together, while I'm providing them solution, I am also learning certain things about life. And that is why it came out very beautifully with me to uh, deal with young minds. And I think as a member, uh, we can reach out to more young minds to engage them with things which are actually life's basics and my experience with kids and youth have been a great journey and uh, i would like to continue to conduct more camps and workshops for whatever i have learned whatever i have been learning i would love to share uh, inherently i'm that so maybe i could be engaged in any sharing and learning kind of a workshop which uh, where i could do my uh, best to serve the world and i would look forward to opportunities that is what i am thank you so much Thank you, thank you so much, Sister Subralina Ji, and for sharing about your journey, personal and spiritual, which are basically the same ultimately. But uh, I think we all know how much Sister Subralina Ji has worked and groomed the children of Prayas Lodge, and some of them are now, you know, are becoming so confident and self-reliant and self. And like so sure about talking, public speaking, and moderating a meeting, like we'll come to know about some of them in the meeting later. So it's a wonderful job that you are doing. And when we started this group, so my, I mean, myself, Suralina Ji and Varsha Ji, we, I mean, thought of this idea and then in the beginning, that's how this Young Indian Theosophist group was started. So uh, thank you for that also. And yeah, and we wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. And to invite our next speaker, uh, I would like to call upon Brother Aditya Mathur, who uh, Although he has spoken a couple of times in the Indian section program, but uh, in the Young Indian Theosophist group, sometimes he is not able to attend due to his uh, many commitments work related. So, but let us hear more about him from himself. Uh, Aditya, over to you. Hi, am I audible? And no, you kindly speak louder. Yeah. Uh, is it audible? Yes, now you're audible. Yeah. Yeah, hi. So I'm Aditya. I'm uh, I'm actually from Delhi, and I mostly attended uh, Shankar Lodge when I was back in Delhi. Uh, but right now I'm in Pune for work, so I've also been attend. I've also been attending Pune Lodge. Uh, here in Pune and like everywhere you'll you'll find great people like e even back in Delhi uh, I had great people like Rajiv Gupta uncle and my father and other people like whom I can absorb a lot from same in Pune I, I find many people here as well like that um, so currently I'm working as a robotics engineer uh, in professional life and uh, like to go a bit more into it like uh, when a robot has to enter in an unknown environment, 
it needs to map it and uh, then it needs to localize and all that stuff. So I work on that. Um, now, I actually got introduced to Theosophy by my father. He's been a long standing member, but uh, I've learned a lot from Rajiv Uncle as well. So uh, I think one of the things he uh, really taught me were he asked me to read a few books in order. So one book I clearly remember is, is Concentration uh, by Ernest Wood. It's a great book. If, uh, I, I think I recommend it to anyone who's in academic or even professional phase because concentration is like a prerequisite for something like meditation. So it's an important book. Yeah. Um, so coming on to aspects of uh, TS that it really attracts me, I think it has to be karma for me. So when I say karma, I have started relating to it on a very minute level sometimes. So uh, when we talk about karma, it, it exists, exists on each and every level, right? So for example, if you take a step, right, we uh, put a force on the floor and the reaction force is what makes us move forward. So stuff like that we can relate to in, in uh, even the smallest aspects of our life. And I think karma is like definitely that for me. So uh, what, again, uh, why karma I feel is so powerful is you don't need an external agent like God or somewhere else to be in your life. Whatever you do will come back. It's as simple. So you must uh, shape your action in such a way that your reaction would be the way you want it to be. Um, so yeah, coming on to hobbies, I play badminton. Uh, and I also am part of a amateur astronomy group. So we study the movement of stars and uh, a few planetary motion, stuff like that. So when there's a special event and all coming, we all gather and try to view it, observe it. So I find that really interesting that we are on a planet which is spinning at 1000 miles an hour in middle of nowhere. And it, it's just a really fascinating thing. I, I like to think about uh, a lot of things. Uh, and uh, ideas for making TS appealing. Uh, I think uh, what we can do more is uh, we can relate things which are uh, more real life. Uh, we can relate that, relate that to theosophy. For example, uh, stress, anxiety, stuff like that. Most of the young people experience if let's say they're having an exam or they have an interview coming up or work related stuff. So if we can relate that and theosophy, like how we can deal with, uh, let's say stress. Why, why do we have stress in the first place when we're thinking of self and stuff like that. So if we can relate these practical aspects of our life with theosophy, I think that would attract youth a lot more because we need to tell them what makes their life better when they come into theosophy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Aditya for sharing your understanding and uh, about your journey. And yes, the law of karma that you have mentioned is the fundamental basis of this whole universe as we study. And, and whatever we do, if we want a particular environment, we have to sow the kind of seeds that we want fruits. And the interesting thing that you mentioned about the way to make theosophy more practical, to more, uh, you know, interesting and influencing for the young people is to make it more practical, as I can understand, and how it helps in solving our day-to-day -day problems and challenges. The more we can do it, the more uh, interesting and appealing we will be able to make it for the youth because yes, today's generation and I think every uh, next generation, uh, they, they want to, you know, go to the root of the thing, not going beating around the bushes, but they want to go to the root of the thing and solve it. So removing all the things that have gathered around spirituality and other things, if they get to know the solution, of the problems that they face, they'll be very much attracted by theosophy. And to invite our next speaker, I request Brother Nath, uh, who has been a uh, uh, rather new 
addition to our Young Indian Theosophist group, and he has taken part in the symposium also. So to know more about him, I request Brother Haranath to uh, share with us about the theme, his thoughts. Yeah, uh, good morning, one and all. And uh, I would like to thank the Theosophy family for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share a platform with you all people. So myself, Haranath, I belong to Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I stay in a place called Tadapalli Buddha and I belong to Ananda Lodge in Tadapalli Buddha. And I do have an experience of uh, eight years into sales and I worked as a HR also. Previous before sales, I worked as a HR for two years. So overall, I am having an experience of 10 years into professional career. And uh, how I come to theosophy is like uh, uh, I studied in Sri Aravinda Vidya Kendam since my childhood. So I'm not new to spirituality. So there I used to listen about theosophy, but uh, since it's been uh, since two years I am become I became active in theosophy. Uh, I can say like that, but I know theosophy as a concept previous. But after that, I realized that theosophy is not a concept. It is not a religion. It is not a uh, thing to know, but it is truth where we have to find out. As I said in previous symposium also, never see theosophy as a concept, never see it as a religion. Or uh, uh, I heard a lot of people are influenced by family or some friends like that, but for me, it is not like that. I, I just came to theosophy by myself questioning. Why I have to come to theosophy? Why, how, how theosophy helps me? So these are the questions. First, I questioned myself and I just uh, got the answer for that questions and I entered into theosophy. And not because of the some other influences I have entered into theosophy. I can uh, say that. So one thing I suggest for better vision to this theosophy is inculcate the habit of questioning. It may be the self-questioning, right? So it is not the answer that enlightens, but the question that enlightens you. So I just um, ask the people to cult uh, cultivate this habit of questioning so that you will grow in spirituality. And coming to my hobbies, I. I love to play chess and uh, I'm a good singer. That's about my hobbies. That's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you, Shikarji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Harnath, for sharing with us different aspects of your life. And really good to know that you are a singer also. So maybe sometime when we are having a get together, either online or offline in person uh, we can enjoy a couple of songs from you also and i think you have raised a very important point of inquiry the spirit of inquiry that is the question that uh, helps us evolve not the answers because answers are all coming from outside but the question that comes from within leads us to the core of anything and that I think all of us must have observed that Brother Harnath keeps sharing his thoughts, his inquiries in the WhatsApp group with so much of depth and which is thought provoking for all of us and it's an inspiration for all of us. So thank you Brother Harnath, looking forward to more participation from you in the upcoming sessions. And to call our next speaker, I would like to invite Brother Varun, uh, whom also we have heard many times during the sessions that he has taken and with a wonderful way of explaining the things that he has. And uh, let us hear something more from him. Over to you, Brother Varun. Good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, I am Varun, and uh, basically from Bangalore, Bangalore City Lodge, uh, Karnataka Chasical Federation. Uh, so I joined, I, I was uh, a regular uh, when I was uh, in school. Uh, we were all going along with our parents, grandparents to the society. So that's how I was introduced. Uh, but later on, after uh, the college life and uh, after once I started working, there was a little bit of a gap. But uh, after all that uh, thing, again, I became active from maybe around 2015, 2014, 2015, uh, more regular to the society and taking part in uh, the various activities, etc. Uh, so that's uh, so the occupation wise, yes, uh, basically a mechanical engineer, uh, being mechanical, I did it in Bangalore. Uh, then I did my MPEC in Bangalore. Uh, then I'm, uh, at present, I'm working in uh, Tata Consultancy Services. So I work basically on the automotive uh, domain. Uh, so I work on the engines and the exhaust systems, uh, where we virtually simulate, I use software to simulate and predict uh, when and how the components fail and try to improve the design before the actual production starts. So that's how, uh, that, that's basically uh, my job. Uh, so how did I come in touch with Theosophy? Yes, uh, it is uh, from my grandparents, both from my mom's side and my father's side, um, grandfather, grandmother. They were pretty active in my native. Uh, so the, whenever I used to go to native, you know, the day used to begin with the uh, Bharat Samaj Puja and uh, various activities. So that's how uh, it all started. And in Bangalore, we were frequently visiting the city lot here. So yeah, so that's how uh, uh, actually third generation uh, grandparents, parent and myself as Pradeep was saying, no, it's similar. All, most of my cousins, although they're not active, but uh, still all know about Theosophy and we are all together uh, when we were younger. But now uh, many are in different cities, uh, but still uh, it's like a family for us from the young, uh, as when we were, were young, so uh, we got introduced to this. So hobbies, yeah, I like... Uh, Running, I frequently participate in various uh, running events uh, across various cities. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, various cities in Bangalore, the marathon, half marathon, full marathon, I keep participating. And before the COVID also, I always used to make it a point that now every year I do some trekking. So for the last seven, eight years, I have been trekking. Uh, Trekked in Uttarakhand, Nimachal, Arunachal, Srinagar. Uh, so because of COVID, there was a break one or two years, but I'm <laughs> looking forward to get back to trekking this year. So running, trekking, reading books, yeah. So these are my uh, hobbies. Uh, so what I like about Theosophy, uh, uh, as most of them pointed, right, Pradeep and Aditya, so it uh, the one good aspect of philosophy is it has everything. Uh, it has uh, stuff for people at any level. Uh, basic level, uh, there are so many books which people can understand, relate. If you want to go in depth, uh, there are deeper rates, occult. And wherever you want, if you go dig it in, and if you want to go deep and learn, everything is very scientific. And it relates, you can easily relate it to what you do in your life. I think that's the important aspect which actually got my initial attention. If you're prepared to dig in deep, understand things, uh, at the end you'll uh, end up seeing that everything is very uh, scientific. Nothing is, uh, uh, you can relate, you can relate uh, whatever is said in your Bhagavad Gita or your Upanishads or what is said in Theosophy, the esoteric occult, when you connect everything, everything looks uh, it, it, it scientific. So that's one thing that initially attracted and later on, yeah, there are various aspects which uh, got my interest. So any visions or ideas to make Theosophy more appealing to the youth? Uh, 
again yes uh, if we can have more generic topics like what we had uh, last week like self sacrifice development to self sacrifice or uh, generic topics so that uh, we can bring in various aspects um, because that is something which is said everywhere punishat talks about it bhagavad gita talks about it science talks about it the other way talks about it so as a speaker uh, you get uh, more freedom to connect the dots uh, you can uh, start from theosophy you can connect it to what the upanishad says about it or what bhagavad gita says or what science says about it and when you give the overall view of this entire thing to the youth so that becomes more appealing to them if you only talk about the science they say okay in this entire lecture maybe i got one or two new points from this lecture so i already knew many things so what is the point of attending so that might be the criteria if you only talk about upanishad bhagavad gita they say okay this is all spiritual so how can you prove it scientifically so if we can if we can have a topic and connect everything and uh, give them a platform uh, to make them think in a, in all these directions i think that will be more appealing to them for that uh, as a speaker so we need to be <laughs> we need to be more confident in the subject so we need to put in our efforts to understand and connect that because everything is not given in uh, all these aspects you know are not given in any book right? you have to know how to connect you have to read all the things separately and you have to know where to connect how to connect how to present it so all these are important <clears throat> one is we have to first know we ourselves have to get stronger we ourselves have to become more confident so that any kind of questions comes we need to be able to answer in a right way Uh, so that we have to be perfect first so the way we present it becomes is very 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 you know very very important because if we have all the information but if you are not able to put it correctly uh, again it does not serve the purpose you are spending one hour time so if you have to uh, we have to learn to put it correctly so that uh, It, the right in the whatever we intend to you know project it everything gets projected in the right way so if all this is done i think yeah it definitely it should appeal the youth and it should bring more people more youth forward i think yeah the effort is always there so we need to put in so that takes time so we also need to learn develop so that's where the role of the elder theosophist comes in somebody is very strong in uh, uh the secret doctrine or anything we need to be open to uh, get in touch with them learn as much as possible try to connect that with scientific aspects so put together because they are good in theory uh, they are good in few things so we are good in technology using technology using presentations using videos etc so we need to connect everything and when we present definitely it should appeal to you so this is my view yeah thank you Thank you, thank you, Brother Varun, so much for sharing with us those valuable thoughts. And yes, I think presentation makes a lot of impact. And uh, yes, the more simpler the presentation and using the audio visual aids, uh, the more impactful it will be. But also, as you said, that we have the person who is sharing also needs to understand first. develop intuition and the more uh, touch the more in depth within go in more depth within so then only whatever the person shares will reach to that depth in the other people so thank you for sharing with us uh, those valuable thoughts and now i would like to invite uh, sister kritika goel whom we all know as uh, a very very active participant in uh, young indian theosophist group and other theosophical activities and who is always ready to take responsibility with cheerfulness without uh, any complaints and uh, always trying to do the best in whatever situation she gets so to listen to more to her i request sister kritika to share with us her thoughts hello everyone happy sunday So my name is Kritika Goel and uh, I am a mechatronics engineer 
and currently I am preparing for the civil services examination. I became a member of Theosophical Society in 2017 and currently I am a member of Tayar Theosophical Lodge, Ghazabad. So though I became a member in 2017 officially, but uh, through Sister Sudan Lina, she used to give us little, little books. I remember uh, Inward Flaring, At the Feet of the Master, I Promise. So when I guess I was of uh, 11 years or maybe 10 years, back then we started reading books. And at that time, we didn't know what is theosophy and what is uh, how it all goes. But we used to read books and uh, enjoy so that it all started back then. Uh, talking about which aspect of theosophy attracts me the most, so definitely A, it is karma, but the third objective of TS, that is to investigate the hidden aspects of nature and hidden power in human beings, is something which attracts me the most. Talking about my hobbies, I like to travel, I like to eat different kind of food items, and I like to watch movies, I like to cycling. I like dancing and the list is long. <laughs> the ideas which I would like to share for making theosophy more appealing to the youth. First of all, I would like to say that we don't actually need to make it appealing to the youth because theosophy chooses us, not we choose it. But uh, otherwise, uh, just to give an idea, I believe that visual segment seems more appealing to the youth. So the youth camps and the other events which already the TS is organizing should be recorded. And those recorded sections should be shared on YouTube. So as much as new people will view it, they'll get to know how interesting the activities are and they'll be able to connect more easily. Also, I would like to uh, give an idea that we can every lodge in their respective cities can conduct summer camps for even non-TS members. Like we used to go at Prayas club summer camp and the curriculum of the summer camp can be designed in a very attractive way so that it becomes fun. But at the same time, the teachings of theosophy can be inculcated. So thank you with this, I end my introduction. Thank you, thank you, Sister Kritika, for sharing with us uh, your thoughts and your journey and very valuable thoughts that we should, I mean, people should try to record all the sessions of the activities and uh, if a lodge can have summer camps for non-members uh, with very simple things and not uh, very in detail or technical things about theosophy, that will really uh, interest a lot of new uh, members young or old and uh, maybe many people who are listening to this may try to in implement it as uh, it's already being implemented at Prayas Lodge so thank you so much for that and just by listening to everyone who is sharing and on the last in the last session also I felt that there is so much of a variety of fields of working of our young Indians that not just uh, spirituality or uh, lectures or this kind of uh, sharing, if anybody wants any advice related to career or what field they want uh, to go in or, you know, there are so many people maybe you will find in our group related to that career or that field who can give some very valuable advice. So, and I think they will be more than willing to help each be to each other. So, I mean, please don't hesitate to ask any sort of advice or guidance. And of course, you make your own final decision based on that. So, thank you, Sister Kritika. And now I would like to invite Sister Gomati, uh, who has been also a regular. Part, uh, participant of Young Indian Theosophist group. And uh, she, we have also heard her during her presentation in one of the sessions that she took. And to know more about her, uh, I would like to invite Sister Gomati. Thank you, Shikhar. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Gomati Radha Krishnan. So geographically, I think I stay closest to the uh, yeah. world headquarters at ADR Chennai. 
uh, although in theosophy as a member i am probably a baby i have just started my journey about 6 uh, months ago and i was introduced to theosophy by none other than vimal balachandar who also lives in chennai uh, so she has created a group you know whatsapp group uh, you know exclusively for theosophy study so we are about 6 or 7 of us over there we meet regularly we read books together and we share a lot of uh, you know, information, probably. She is the one who conducts the seminars and we also read together. So she was the one who introduced me to theosophy and uh, what aspect of theosophy appeals to me the most? Now, till now we have read about two books, one by, uh, you know, Alan James and the other one by Jiddu Krishnamurti, sir. And both of the books have been uh, talking about, uh, you know, reincarnation, karma, and uh, you know the law of evolution how we evolve and then getting into the soul consciousness is what uh, appealed to me the most so how do we get over there so being a student for life that is what you know i try to learn from everywhere how can i be a student better myself everyday basis is there any improvement uh, hobbies as such uh, i love to do yoga i love to do pranayama every day morning i take classes also I like to meditate, I like to contemplate, I like to think, and uh, I like to try different new things, like new, new things I like to learn. I'm also part of a choir group in Chennai. We, we sing together. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, that's about my hobbies. I, I love to read books also, and as Kritika said, I also love to travel and find more about many cultures, the importances of places and such things. Uh, after this, uh, any vision or idea for making Theosophy more appealing? So since I'm very new, the two books that I read was, uh, you know, quite tough in terms of the language used. I had to keep my dictionary open for finding the meaning of the words that were in the books of uh, uh, James Allen, that the one was, as a man thinketh. Of course, most of the things I understood, but certain words were very difficult words. So how can we make even uh, more simpler for the uh, youth of uh, uh, theosophy? And also uh, um, in training, I have been uh, a soft skill trainer for about 11, 12 years now. Earlier, I used to be a banker. So in my experience of these 11, 12 years, I have seen that uh, when it comes to presentation of some other speaker also spoke, um, a, one picture can speak a thousand words. So instead of using more words in our presentation, if we can be very natural, if we can, so, you know, visual impact is more when it comes to learning. So most of us, sometimes we learn visually, some of us are auditory, some of us are kinesthetic as, I think Pooja mentioned she was kinesthetic. All of us have different uh, learning, uh, you know, techniques or methods, but visual makes the most impact because when we see a picture, we can remember the picture instead of 10 words or 50 words, so if we can make that kind of a presentation and make uh, you know more of experiential learning, the methodology of imparting uh, you know knowledge, if it can be experiential, activity based, or some games wherein the participant also experiences, I think that has worked and has gone a long way in uh, getting the learning from within the participant. Like to educate is to uh, not teach, but then to draw the participants from within, you know, draw the information out that the questioning attitude of some other member also had mentioned over here. If that can be done, I think that will go a long way in paving the way for new theos office to come across. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Looking forward to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Gomati, for your valuable words and suggestions. And with the experience that you have in the soft skills, I think, uh, and also, just as I said, you suggested to have uh, an activity for this kind of session also, but due to some technical limitations, we were not able to do this time. But definitely in future, we will re definitely request your inputs, how to make the sessions more interactive and more participative. And yes, looking forward uh, to be uh, with you more. So thank you so much. Thank and you. now I would... Uh, now I would like to request uh, Sister Sri Yashi Ojha to share with us her thoughts on these themes. And we all know that Sister Sri Yashi Ojha has uh, 
being a very prolific speaker in the Indian section convention during the international convention she uh, spoke in the symposium and also in young Indian theos office and in a other uh, Indian section meetings online and uh, the way of her presentation is also very inspiring so to know more about her I would request Sister Sri Oja to share with us her thoughts. Thank you Brother Shikhar. Good morning brothers and sisters my name is Sri Oja and I'm currently residing in Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh. As per what I am doing, I am in a mix of things. So currently I'm working as a content writer in Asiana Times, as well as as a journalism intern. In my 60 pages in brandshape.in, I have been freelancing a lot. Uh, writing fascinates me. I write because I want to heal people by what I write. And uh, as for uh, my membership, I am a member of the Anand Lodge of Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand Federation. My hobbies include singing, dancing, sketching, reading, journaling, and I love to write short stories or nazms in Urdu. So these are some interests that I have. Apart from this, I am a linguist enthusiast, as well as different cultures fascinate me. I was introduced to the Theosophical Society by Dr. Sushma Srivastava, ma'am, who happened to be my professor of ancient history in Jagat Tarun Girls Degree College from where I graduated, which is a constituent college of the University of Allahabad. When she was briefing me about what Theosophical Society really is, because I knew about it as a student of history, I did not know about it in structure, in organization. So when she spoke about it, she was so enthusiastic. She was so illuminating that I think it is because of her push that I joined the Theosophical Society. I have always been thankful to man. And I'm thankful to all of you members who have been there from generations to have welcomed me with open arms. Thank you. Apart from this, I believe that my first class that I, my first seminar that I attended, I take it as a class because for me it is teaching. And the first uh, seminar that I attended was on the Mahatma letter number 42. And I was hardly aware of anything, but the crux that stayed with me and that is with me even now is that to learn or to study anything new, we must learn to keep aside our personal elements and develop patience. The aspect of theosophy that, appeal, that appeals to me the most is solidarity and equanimity. The feeling of gratitude and happiness that we feel every time, I'm, I'm sure everybody must feel this because I do. It is inculcated from within my soul that I must do something for the society. I'm not going to just sit here and breathe. No, I'm going to live and I'm going to make my life worth living. This sense of serving others, this determination that is fueled within my soul to work for greater good. This is all because of Theosophical Society. Moreover, the institution furthers the purpose of religion, which is to inculcate goodness and truth. I don't believe there is any other religion that is so clear in the objectives as Theosophical Society is. In order to propagate Theosophy amongst the youth, because I know it is a very important discussion right now and youth will play a significant role. They need it. It is just that they're not aware of it. I think social media will, pay, will play a key role. And as Sister Kritika has already uh, stated, there must be summer camps for young children so that they can join it. They can imbibe what Theosophy has to teach. It is not necessary that they need to be members. They need to understand how we need to live because Theosophy does not teach us anything. It just teaches us a way of life. And that is all that we want, a proper way of life. We've lost it with all the, uh, with all the change in the world, with the development of technology. I think it is necessary that we are rooted to who we are and we must be aware of it. So Theosophical Society can be reiterated through seminars, through little clips and symposiums that we share online and not only on YouTube, but also on Instagram. We can go on Instagram lives. We can tell people, we can make people aware. We can propagate the legacy, the objectives, the tenets, the teachings of theosophy. The youth are in need of it. They need to be liberated mentally, 
because we are always very tired we are jumping from one place to another we are never in the moment but theosophy has taught me one thing i have learned how to breathe it out so now i think it is my duty as well as the duty of all of us to pass it on to those who are in need of it i believe more and more youth will be a part of the theosophical society once they are aware of what theosophy has to offer we do not need to make it appealing we just need to make them aware of what we are it is sure a long road but a road worth traveling thank you thank you thank you sister shriyashi for sharing with us your thoughts on uh, about your journey and how to uh, take theosophy or what is the fundamental approach should be the fundamental approach to uh, for the youth to become aware about something like theosophy and how it helps in dealing with the challenges of the youth and yes i think where there is honey the bees will come as jay krishna moti said so the crux of theosophy the essence of theosophy is such that just when the person realizes what it is there is no more need to make it appealing but the people the person himself or herself is attracted to it so thank you very much for sharing thank you sir. with us your thoughts and all the best all the best in your all your noble endeavors for future and now i would like to invite sister shruti goyal whom also we have heard in some of the symposiums and to listen to more from her i would like to invite sister shruti goyal good morning everyone my name is shruti goyal and uh, i became a member of theosophical society in 2017 and i am a member of prayas theosophical lodge gazabad i'm currently pursuing btech uh, in computer science from banasthali vidyapeet rajasthan and i came in touch with theosophy and theosophical society through sister subralina she is the thread which knits us all on one piece of cloth theosophy teaches many aspects but the aspect which attracts me the most is its very motto there is no religion higher than the truth it doesn't matter whether you are you practice hinduism islam christianity buddhism or zoroastrianism what matters is how universal brotherhood is not only being taught but also being practiced and preached how incorporating different ideologies beliefs into a unit without changing them can change the world uh, and talking about my hobbies uh, my hobbies include dancing binge watching and i am a street badminton player um, as we know this is a tech generation so to appeal more young people we the current members should practice um, more participate more in different events and make videos so it can reach out different people who can know about our activities know about theosophy also uh, lodges can conduct reading sessions which are open to everyone the books of the lodge uh, should not be restricted to members but to nearby people to come read explore like a mini library thank you thank you sister shruti for sharing with us your thoughts and especially the idea of having book clubs and a live small libraries open for public where uh people who are non members who can who can also you know get some information to begin with about theosophy so definitely the people who are who will listen to this recorded talk or sharing in the future definitely will get more and more ideas thank you for that and now i would like to invite the smriti sagar uh, to share with us about his uh, journey uh, personal spiritual or his vision or ideas about how to make theosophy more appealing good morning everyone myself smriti sagar mahant i am currently working as a software developer i am a member of theosophical society for last 5 years currently i am member of as theosophical lodge i keep interesting in playing cricket and painting 
I came to know about theosophy from my sister-in-law Subramin Lina Mohanty, who is active member of theosophy. The most attractive thing about theosophy is one of the objective of theosophy that is universal brotherhood without distinction or race, creed, sex, caste, or color. For attracting more young members to theosophical society, we should conduct study camps where all can discuss and share the their exploration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Smriti Sagar, for sharing your thoughts and valuable inputs about to make theosophy more appealing. And wish you all the best in your future efforts and looking forward to more participation from all of you and almost we are to the end approaching the end of today's session uh, i will the next speaker or the sharer with us is sister mansha and all of these young indian theosophists that we are we have been listening to for some time now have been as we can hear have been motivated inspired and groomed by sister subralina monti who has been doing a wonderful job in this direction so to listen to more about her thoughts, I invite Sister Mansha. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad I got to introduce myself today. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Mansha, and I'm part of the Prayas Lodge, Ghaziabad. Uh, I am a student of grade 11, and I am studying science. Uh, I came in touch with Theosophy and the society through Sister Sophina, uh, who slowly and gradually introduced me to this large world of uh, Theosophy, Theosophists, and the literature. Further, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the Bhavali Youth Camp, uh, where I got to know the core of Theosophy and the science behind it. Um, after reading uh, and getting to know about the society, uh, I was most intrigued by the concept of uh, universal brotherhood and karma board. Uh, this uh, concept concept of brotherhood uh, was very similar to the concept of equality, uh, which has been taught as a core value to me since I was a toddler. Uh, talking about my hobbies, I have a keen interest in baking and cooking in general. Uh, I enjoy reading both fiction and non-fiction books alongside which I like to travel uh, to non-tourists unexplored destinations. As a young member, I feel uh, that the youth of today would be attracted uh, by the concept uh, of karma and brotherhood, which should be uh, spread uh, wide through social media, both social media and uh, on a more ground level, uh, I would want to. I would want the locals of uh, the surroundings to be a part of the theosophical uh, gatherings, even if they are not a member of the theosophical society. This will uh, appeal to them, and uh, hence they'll, you know, join in uh, further promote theosophy. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mansha, for your thoughts and suggestions. Yes, it's always a good thing to invite some of our friends or family members who are non-members to such gatherings, either in person or online, like we have seen in our Young Indian Office group, how although slowly but gradually, this family is getting bigger and bigger and hope it will continue to do so. And uh, more and more, souls would join this group of young Indian theosophists and the next speaker the sharer for today I would like to invite brother Smriti Ranjan if you can switch on your video so I can spotlight you yeah so brother Smriti Ranjan is going to share with us his thoughts good morning good morning everyone 
myself smriti ranjan mohanto i am currently working as software developer i am the member of theosophical society for last 5 year currently i am i am member of press theosophical law i i came to know theosophy from my sister in sister in law subralina who is active member of theosophy i have read i have read few books of theosophy and attend young youth camp where i learn where i uh, learn more about the theosophy teaches the most important asset i appreciate the most most is the law of karma it is us to concept about what we do say and think more camp camp and group discuss for youth we will help many many new young member to join the theosophical society okay thank you thank you thank you brother spati ranjan for sharing with us your thoughts and uh, uh, really listening to all of you again and again it, uh, i think most of us would agree that there has been and the effect of theosophy worldwide in the human consciousness that you know a lot of superstitions have been done away with and the materialism the direction in which the world was going at that time there has been theosophy has been able to make a dent into the direction and give it a a, a different a little bit slight change in the direction and the way the youth are sharing the importance of law of karma and the universal brotherhood has so many of you have shared really uh, gives a ray of hope that yes the transformation is still possible and there will be more and more people who would be interested in such teachings rather than just blindly following religious principles and for today's last speaker Uh, who is the Srivimal Balachandra, who is not able to attend in person today's meeting. So I would request Sister Suvrilina if she has a small video sent by Sister Vimal, if she can share that video with us. And she is the last speaker for today. So I request Sister Suvrilina to share the video. डेस्कटॉप पर प्ले करना पड़ेगा हाँ सुब्रलिया जी कैन यू हियर मी नेचर एंड हाउ Yeah. I am Vimal okay. Palachandra. I belong to the Adyar Lodge in Chennai, and I joined the society in 2010. I am extremely grateful to all the friends that I made, who encouraged me to continue reading, suggested me books, and I, sometimes I read the books after several years of their suggestion. But yes, it took me time to grasp, and eventually, uh, theosophy, whether it is in the latest form of Krishnamurti or whether it uh, of the form of Lavatsky. are all difficult to understand and one has to develop a certain type of thinking a certain type of mind one has to become a certain type of person to to continue the progress of studying theosophy 
what appeals to me most in the society is its motto uh, satya nasti paro dharma there is no religion higher than truth i would uh, suggest that people who want to spread the word of theosophy go about it in their own family and circle of friends and uh, that is the way theosophy will be spread by your own behavior by her, your own nature and how people see how good a person you have become over the years and uh, that is how you will be able to spread theosophy i i think the best way to spread theosophy is through the teachings of krishna murti uh, to start with because the other things are possibly you know they may offer you answers to certain questions but it does not change you psychologically what needs to be changed is your psychology because we are all of the same kind of nature competitive jealous greedy and everything angry so many bad qualities in our psyche which need to be changed and uh, we have to work on that so i think the society should go even more forcefully in spreading the teachings of krishna murti that's my suggestion for uh, spreading it to the youth that's it thank you okay thank you thank you sister vimal bal chandra and thank you sister lina ji for sharing that video and yes that has been a very uh, valuable suggestion also and that's why also from the next month month of july as you might have seen we after discussion we have included a session of meditation and in which there will be the, some theory and of course some the practical also and then a session of uh, study of jay krishna murti in which a video will be shown to everyone followed by a discussion and then symposium on one sunday and then a regular study so uh, we are trying to make these sessions of iit also more and more a value added so that it's not just a lecture or some talk that we listen and we appreciate but rather we take away something valuable that really transforms us from within and then we become a nucleus for our surroundings and with this we come to the end of today's session although we have gone past our uh, time duration of 1 hour but i think this was the second part of introduce introduction of everyone so uh, on behalf of indian section we would like to thank everyone who took part in today's session and the first session and share about themselves and hopefully uh, we'll be we are looking forward for more and more participation from all of you in making this yit group more active and vibrant one and also a magnetic one to invite and attract more and more young people and we wish you all the best in all your future endeavors and among us we have some of the senior theosophists also right now if they would like to make a quick comment then uh, we can have or uh, something they would like to share with the young people they are most welcome if anyone would like to say something shinde ji sushma ji or we have yes. taral ji yes shinde ji please yeah yeah now it is unmuted okay ha huh, yes sir yes i am very happy and uh, congratulate to all the participants as the young hello theosophist our aim is to know each other increase our affection and be brotherly to all hello members and that is what i am really enjoying to know these young people who have interest in theosophy especially i congratulate all these uh, there are many names about 17 names are there but i don't know remember all the names but i know them well because knowing is very important knowing itself involves to know their feelings to know their interest in theosophy and how they are really interested 
in the law of evolution law of karma law of reincarnation that is what uh, we are aimed at and i am thankful to shikhar ji to bring all these young uh, souls i am not souls in young body rather old souls in young body uh, to have this group of young theosophists i am really happy to see them and listen to them especially their interest in the theosophical teaching and theosophy uh, in general i always say coming into the theosophical society we must make our heart dominant and mind not dominate at present our mind is dominating and not the heart so mind is more analytical but heart is towards the understanding by such practice our uh, weak mind which was seeing problems becomes strong day by day to look problems as opportunity and finally when our mind gets balanced it understand all problems and opportunities are nothing but inner challenges and this is how the theosophical teachings teaches it is not a religion or a philosophy or a theos uh, what we say science but it is synthesis of all these and these people who have participated have understood well and i hope there is future for the theosophical society in this direction i once again appreciate their efforts and wish them very very success in future thank you thank you thank you thank you so much indiji for your inspiring words and uh, definitely your everybody will appreciate your blessings and good wishes to them thank you so much and brother taral munshi would like to say something uh good morning everyone and uh, i would just like to share this that i am very happy that everyone who said something about them has theosophy within them what i mean to by this theosophy within which the words came to me just now in this meeting only that everyone has some different skills but all of them are uh, very and very very enthu in putting all the skill to use for theosophy and that is the best part which has come out of today because so many talents uh, they have said that they have they are in practicing different different subjects different different things but by those things they are uh, trying to give theosophy a new direction so that is the most happiest thing from today thank you shikhar ji such meetings are required and uh, um, i with your permission and everyone's permission i will be contacting many young youth people to do some more activities which i had thought of but i have never thought that i will get all the tools and all the people within ourselves only sure. yeah that's always a, i think great opportunity for all of them to have a mentor like you and definitely i think that's a very good thing as you said that different skills different talents but along with with their careers they can also use them for the propagation of theosophy so if uh, there is anyone else who would like to say something otherwise we proceed for closing today's session okay if uh, nobody is there then we would like to thank all the participants young and young and little younger who took their time and attended to this session and gave their valuable inputs and also would like to thank sister sovrilina ji who started the meeting and gave the technical support because for me it was a little complicated here from a different location and in future also we'll be looking for such support for some time and so let us all come together in heart and mind and this bond of friendship camaraderie and a sense of family togetherness that we have which has brought a sense of peace 
strength, happiness. Let us share it with the whole manifestation for the welfare of everyone, for the spiritual upliftment of everyone by using all our thought power and willpower. Oh, Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhattani Pashyantu Makaschitakabhavayu Om Shanti 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 Thank you once again. Thank you once again, everyone, and wishing you all the best for your all noble endeavors.